So our second game that we'll work with is more of a slower paced uh, tap and uh, you know a, a point and click kind of game and it's going to be set up of there's going to be a minimum amount of scenes that are going to be required for the game but then you can add as many as you want so in this case I got a home scene a help screen I didn't go to the help screen but there's home help there's the gate the door the hallway the hallway to the right the hallway to the left and in this case good ending bad ending so scenes which we've worked with before what we've worked with before is clicking on things to do something else I click on the start button to start the game it goes to the uh, scene zero gate if I click on the other button it'll go to the help screen and that can be set up however you want on here I've just got a little scrolling thing it'll say something like hello welcome to the house uh, try not to die so then it goes back to home you start the gate it's all in the example that we'll do it'll all be very very simple graphics of course eventually you'll add your own graphics this project uh, believe it or not will be the final project uh, but I of course expect it to be amazing because we're gonna be doing the coding it's about 400 lines of code compared to the previous game which was like uh, 120 or something this is gonna be up to 400 and so uh, you're going to have basically we're gonna start the lecture and do the lecture for these various days that are coming and it's gonna do on the, be due on the last day of class Wednesday all the requirements are not on canvas yet but um, the main ideas are on canvas and I'm gonna put a copy of my code at the end of the day so you can compare my code and your code and so we'll be able to uh, create these scenes this one's different in that you can pick something up and have it interact with something else so this is uh, this is a hit detection does this object touch that object if it does then it breaks the window and then you go to the next scene over here then there was this other object that it had its own stuff going on it had the sort of like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling on it and then eventually whoops I break it it doesn't do anything besides being a fun little interactive thing environmental thing and you choose left and right scenes right scene spoiler alert going to the right you have there's absolutely no way to survive the right scene uh, going to the right hallway people will think to try to open the door or get that painting or whatever but nope the little skull thing is gonna come at you and eventually you're dead there's nothing to do there of course you can program it that you do have a fighting chance but I didn't hear and that takes you to the bad ending and basically rest in peace uh, the left one you can pass this one and this is the one that's going to be based somewhat on their sequence of events because what could happen is if a person tries to open up the door that doesn't look boarded up uh, it will start to uh, have these spikes coming out let's see spikes it'll start to have spikes coming in through you know coming out through the the wall and eventually well you get a spike in the head so you don't make it uh, and if you are able to properly navigate that <clears throat> sequence there uh, maybe opening up the boarded door and such you might get to the good ending I won't show the good ending so that maybe one day you can get to it if you um, well, I guess you will see the good ending once we program it okay well I won't show it yet but we'll get to it eventually and uh, that'll be your big idea <clears throat> there's gonna be a minimum amount of screens that you need to go through a good ending bad ending music your own graphics etc clicking on stuff in the environment moving stuff and um, that'll be the big idea general questions on the project before we start setting it up okay so then what we want to do everyone should have an Android tablet at least and uh, if you wanted a drawing tablet you can get one of those too and what we're going to do then with um, with Adobe animate is to create a brand new project at the moment we're focusing on Android uh, so when uh, Adobe animate starts up you want to select air for Android Uh, I'm going to go with another horizontal game. This gives us a vertical canvas. So we want to switch our canvas size. Just switch those over 800 by 480. Okay. 
And I'm going to save this into my flash drive. This will be, um, we can call it um, Adventure Quest Game. So I'm saving this with the date because uh, we're going to work on various versions of it throughout the lectures and save that with your last name, uh, Project uh, 4. Okay, so uh, we're going to need a on our very first scene here, some sort of uh, welcome screen, some sort of uh, title screen for your project. I'm going to just get the brush tool and just write whatever. This will be Adventure Quest. Part one. You know, whatever you want, whatever your project is, call it whatever you want. And uh, I'm going to have a couple of simple buttons to start playing or go get help. So similar to before, just completely simple buttons, which I'm sure you will design better. Make sure you fill in the colors, uh, because everything that's transparent, remember, is not clickable. And therefore, people are going to get frustrated in that they're trying to click, and the hit detection isn't working. So again, what I like to do is change my canvas color to a gray so that I can tell what is transparent and what is not. So this will be a button to start the game, to play the game, and a button for help. We'll see several times that once you can do something, once you understand something, you'll be able to then uh, just change it for uh, future projects. So eventually, of course, uh, I'm not going to do it just yet, but these need to be turned into symbols, they need instance names, and they need event handlers, etc., etc. We'll get to that. We'll design some of the assets a little bit first. So this is my first scene, and scene names can be anything you want, but I'm going to call this scene Start. Remember your scene panel. Scene start. We'll do then a scene help, where the uh, help information about what the game is or how to play. It's a pretty straightforward uh, game in that you you're either going to be tapping on things or tapping and dragging things. So new scene. Call that scene help. This will be something about um, how to play. So how to play. Tap on screen. Items or try tapping and dragging. Whatever you want to say here that explains to your user how the game works. And this will need a back button. Got a start scene, a help scene. Basically, if you were able to make the Tap Frenzy game work, you should be able to make this game work as well. And remember, like I said last time, because of our time, um, the last two lectures to make sure your Tap Frenzy game works are on Canvas. 
so you should have gotten the email uh, or, uh, since Wednesday last week that, that, that those were, not Wednesday, but a little bit after uh, Thursday, I think, that those were available, and you should watch them over the weekend. And if you haven't, you can still watch them, of course, because the game Tap Frenzy is due on Wednesday. Uh, the, the lecture for this game, I, I expect that all of the lectures will be in person uh, based on our time, and then you'll have your time to, to work. So if you've got Tap Frenzy working, they should be very similar. Okay, so start and help. We're going to have a scene that starts everything off very simply, that, ex that kind of acclimates the user that, OK, you're going to be tapping on some things for something to happen. And then uh, for other things, you might tap and drag, and, and so forth. So there's a new scene. I'm going to call this one, in my case, Scene Gate, because uh, I'm going into a scary mansion. But before I get into the mansion, there's going to be a gate. And here again, uh, not too, not quite the time to make it too elaborate just yet. But I'm going to create some sort of scene where there's a gate. Um, maybe I'll do it as um, just a um, some sort of iron gate. Of course, I want perfectly straight lines at some point, but uh, that'll be something that can be fixed later. Now, some of these things that we're going to be drawing are going to be objects that uh, are going to be clickable. So the gate is something I want to click on at some point. So I want to design it in a way that I will be able to click on it. Meaning anything that is not filled in with a color is going to be uh, transparent. I'm gonna draw a scary tree over here. So I'm just drawing everything as outlines, and that'll be something you again you want to think about. Anything that is not filled in with a color is not clickable. So just for the purposes of getting this to work, I'm going to fill in some basic colors here. This gate is transparent, but uh, I'm going to fill it in with colors because I'm going to need people to be able to click on it. Would transparent colors work? Technically, they would. Technically, they would, yes. If you fill in a color and set your alpha to zero, it is it is technically a shape that can be clicked on, but will be transparent. Yeah, that'll work. So basically, when we do this first version of the game, pretty much anything that is white is going to be clickable. Anything that is not white is not clickable. This, of course, will be changed as you make your game more complete. But I've got here a sort of narrow passageway going toward a gate. The gate will be clickable. Again, technically, a person will have a hard time clicking on the actual gate lock here, because I didn't fill any colors. Uh, so I, if I want that to be clickable, I do want to fill in a color. Put some scary birds over here. Now 
they birds or are they vampire bats? Okay, so I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this and give you a little moment to create something quick like that. Definitely the main idea that on this first scene, you need one simple thing to click on. A door, um, a key lock. Um, so a gate, anything basic that a person can simply click on and then they'll, they'll be able to go forward. You saw in the example that I want to embellish this by when I click on the door, it's going to swing open and play a sound. So think in terms if you'd like to do that, that you, let's say, this is going to go, I'm going to go into a different kind of a house uh, through the garage door. So I can uh, press, I can click on the garage door, it'll slide up and it'll play the sound of a garage door. Maybe I'm exploring a cave and I had to push aside a boulder. So I'm going to draw a boulder, it'll be white because I'm going to be able to click on it and when I person clicks the boulder will go out of the way and then some sort of rock sounds as the gate, as the cave opens up. Next scene. Um, there's like a preliminary gate with a simple click and then a new scene of scene one door. This is then where things will change a little bit more. This is where what I'd like to do is something will help me open another thing. I can pick up a rock to break the window. I can pick up a tree branch to help me uh, you know, jump over the ravine. I have something that I can pick up and hit or interact with another thing to cause uh, the action. So this is the scene where it's going to focus on um, picking up an item and using it in the environment. Maybe picking up a key that I see under a rock and using it on the front door's lock. Simple as that. So in my example, I'm going to draw then the front door to this place. idea is I'm going to have these windows that I'm going to break. I guess that window is way too low to the ground. That's inviting for someone to break in. I'm going to put that higher. So the person might see this uh, front door <clears throat> and uh, think about going straight to the front door, but the front door will, will not open up. So here we will eventually set this up that this reacts uh, in some sort of way. In my example, uh, the door sort of shakes a little bit and it kind of maybe growls so we can animate these various things on screen with interactivity. Everything that we create on screen, we could have the person click, and then they, they, it reacts in a certain way. So in this case, um, maybe make it obvious, some sort of object. The other, in the example, object in the game, uh, it, it, it was a rock, but it, after looking at it, people were saying, oh, it looks like a fox's head. Why is there a fox's head on the ground? Uh, well, the answer to that, it's obviously a fox skull that I used to break the window. But in this case, it's going to be a rock. So I'm going to pick up a rock to break the window. So what is going to be interactive is the rock on the ground, the door, and the window. So you 
can create your first uh, interactive scene like that. So eventually that rock will be turned into a symbol. It'll have an instance name. The door will be turned into a symbol with an instance name. That window will be in a symbol with an instance name. Then we're going to write code that you can not only click, but you can click and drag the rock. And then it'll be hit detection. If the rock object touches the window object, break the window. Once the window breaks, take us to the next scene which I'm going to call scene 2 hall. So new scene hall. This is where then the game could start to branch off. I'm just going to do simple left and right, but obviously based on your idea and your amount of time, you could have this branching off into multiple different um, directions inside of the environment. So in the example here, I had a hallway. Um, doing the beta testing, people didn't quite get that they could click on the hallway to go that way. So it might be more obvious for people that they're actual doors. So I'm still going to sort of create that we've walked into a room. But I'll make it obvious by having doors that they can pick to go left or right. So I'll do it by having doors over here. I think I'll put a fireplace here, and then above the fireplace a painting, so people will think oh, there's something up on that painting. And that's what I showed in the example, that the painting is, is not... The painting is interactive, but it's a misdirection. It doesn't actually do uh, anything as part of the game. Uh, other people, what they did was, well, after I knock the painting over, there's a key there, and then I get the key and I use it in the room or elsewhere. That, that'll that be something you can do, of course. And as we see how we can interact with the environment, pick up items and all of that, you might be able to do that. But for the moment, I'll just put a boat. And this is a fireplace. See, how does a fireplace look? I guess there's logs, fire. It's the summer. I don't know why anyone's got their fireplace going, but all right. So what's going to be interactive is the painting. So I fill in a color for what I want the hit areas of the painting to be. I guess someone could technically press right between the sails there and then they'll get mad that nothing happened. So remember to fill in colors. Now, these doors, I need them to be also clickable, but the shape is not closed. So you need to close the shape. Since it's outside of the canvas, the person won't see it. That's fine. So um, you could just, what I usually do in this case is I, I draw the ending of the shape just so that the shape is closed. So I can click on it, and it's OK that it's weird and it's off the canvas. I just need it to be a closed shape so I can click on it.
so that the player can click on it. Again, chances for interaction. Um, a person could click on the um, fireplace and then they, they get hurt. Now we're not doing anything like life points or, or anything like that. It's basically uh, you navigate the, the maze correctly and you win or you lose. So there's no life points, but that's something that could be set up. But it could be that if you tap on the fireplace, it plays a sound and you can record yourself saying ouch or you can get some sounds from the uh, YouTube library. All of those sounds that actually that I played when I demoed the version of the game, all of those I got them off of the, the YouTube um, library. Those little growling sounds and those mysterious sounds and everything, I got it all off of YouTube. So the possibilities here are to go left and right. We'll have a right hallway and a left hallway. So a new scene, we'll start with the right hallway. Uh, I know that'll be S3 hall right. I know that um, the there are going to be some dead ends that will definitely end up in a game over screen. You can do that if you, you can be that mean if you want, or you can let people actually have a chance always to actually survive. Uh, just to show this example, if a person goes to the right hallway from the main hallway, there is a definite game over at the end of that hallway. So I'll draw some sort of hallway. Doing it in perspective over here in terms of there's a there's a door at the end of the hallway. Be painting there as well. I didn't make it interactive in the in the uh, in the demo game. I didn't make any anything interactive in, in, in the right hallway. But you could, in terms of you've already built up the idea to the user that you can tap on things or drag things. So you can continue that and have someone try to open up that painting and maybe it's the same sort of idea that the painting falls to the ground but then uh, I know that this is the one where the creature is going to come at us and after some amount of times then you will they, they, they will not live. So it's going to have a door there. Put another door, another red herring. Oh, I'm going to escape. I'm going to go through this other door. Nope. This route is definitely game over. Nothing will, in my case, nothing will be interactive here. But if I wanted it to be interactive, I would uh, paint it in with a color. Uh, we would turn it into a symbol eventually and then write action script for it to be interactive. The actual monster, that's going to be its own symbol a little bit later, so I won't add it in just yet. Here you can create a type of a uh, hallway, another scene where you're going to have the user go into a dead end.
Okay, well, in this game, in this version, um, you take the right turn, you're not going to make it, you take the left turn, there's the chance for you to survive. So uh, I'm going to make another hallway, left hallway. Now, one thing you could do is you can copy what you've drawn here, then we can paste it into the other hallway and flip it over. I'm going to give that a try, actually. Control A to select all. Control C to copy that. Make a new scene. This is also part of scene three, but then hall left. Now I'm numbering these 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 90, whatever. Again, you can make this as complex as you want. We're in the beginning just to understand how the code works. We're not doing that very many rooms. Um, I see people when you when they do these projects, you get really elaborate and you go this way and you go that way and you pick up this item and you go to the wrong turn. Now I didn't make it any way for you to go back. Uh, it's all just going to be one direction. Um, so it, once you learn how to go toward a certain room, you should be able to extrapolate how to go back. So. Anyway, here's the hall left. So I'm going to paste it in. It's the exact same uh, graphic from the hall right. But since it's still selected, then I can go to Edit. Uh, where is it? Modify. Um, transform. Flip horizontal. So under the Modify menu, we can transform this, flip horizontal. And it may be a very subtle change. But the way I drew mine originally on the other scene was that it was um, you know, in the long hallway perspective. So when I'm on the right hallway, it looks like, yeah, down the hallway, there's where I can make make it out. Left hallway, it's the same thing, but the other perspective. And uh, maybe change a couple more things from it. I guess the doorknobs are usually on the left. Is that true? Well, I guess if you're in, inside or outside of it, it's on the left or the right, isn't it? I will put that on the left over here. I think on this one, I think what I'll do here on this one, uh, I'll I'll change it so that the so that the door looks boarded up. put one board on that one, but then I'll put like two or three boards on the other one. So people will think, well, let me try to open the door that's boarded up. But then there's one over there that's got lots of boards, so that might be harder to open up. So then I'll clean these up. So in this, uh, in this scene, the idea is that people can interact with different things in the scene, but most of the things will lead to an eventual death. Uh, so the idea in this scene is if a person clicks to wrong things or three wrong things game over if they click the correct thing the first time great if they click the, the, the correct thing on the second time great but there's gonna be like a limit you can click on three wrong things game over if you can click on less than three wrong things 
you win. So maybe to make it obvious then, okay, uh, the, um, the door at the end is the correct door, but I'll make that one look more boarded up than this other one. So people might try to open the one that's less boarded up, so they use up one of their possibilities of being wrong. So okay, well, that spikes are coming out. Maybe then I need to check what's behind the painting. Nope, that's the wrong possibility too. More spikes come out. Maybe something else on, on the wall. Maybe some sort of... Um, maybe we'll put a chandelier. Maybe people think, well, I maybe I have to open up the chandelier. No, that's the third wrong thing. Three wrong things, you're dead. The main thing was you needed to go through the door at the very front over there. But like again, I'll, I'll make that one look like really boarded up. These wood planks over here showing really, really boarded up. People are thinking, well, I don't have any tools. I can't open it. I can't go through that, so I won't even try. Let me try these other doors but everything else will be wrong. Oh, you've been trapped in a haunted house before? Mm -hmm. No, but generally, I think those kinds of um, boards, mm -hmm. when it's, especially if it's not nailed down all the way through, mm -hmm. that they're generally easy to pull out. So if you have them like click on three times at the end of the door, then that one, that's one for a click for each board that they had to pull out. Oh, sure. But if they click two times on the side door, wants to pull it out and then wants to try to open the door mm -hmm. and they find that the door doesn't open mm -hmm. that's a good idea then this is how you build up the um we know that there are three clicks before you die so they would need to use all their three clicks on that main door to get through if they wasted a click on trying to open the side door and then the main door you've used up your clicks and then you're going to die so that might be a way to do it so um, I think that um, that might be a good idea. So that means we will make all of these clickable, filling it in with color. So they'll be able to try to open the easy door, which is not going to work. Then the door that looks harder, that one's going to be clickable. We can make the other things like the painting clickable to waste another one of their clicks. <laughs> okay, here, here'll be an, here'll, here will be another mean one. Uh, maybe this hallway has a, a not a what do you call it? Not a trap door, but one of those like attic. Solid. Doors? Yeah, Alec. Uh, uh, Antic. Attic. Attic. Something like that. So we'll say that coming up over here. Oh my god. There's one of these 
doors up here. Hey, what if I click? What if I click? What if I try to open that? That door just has a little string. That should be easy to jump up and grab. Jump up and grab. So the only way is they need to do their three clicks on the main door that looks the hardest one to get into. Anything else builds up their wrong clicks and therefore eventually uh, spikes from above or below or somewhere. Now why don't they run back to the other highway? Well, we never programmed that, so there they go. All right, so this ending could get you to a good ending or a bad ending. And the hall, right way hall definitely gets you to a bad ending. So we'll create a scene for a bad ending and a good ending. So uh, new scene, this will be scene four. Ending bad. What you can do from this scene is uh, you see a message, you see a drawing, and what you can do is either start over, try again, or quit the game. Maybe even rage quit if you see it too many times. So uh, do something here to say you lose you loser. So, going to draw your tombstone. And this will have buttons to restart or quit. Start, maybe your zombie hand comes out from the dirt and then it starts over. So then now create an S4 ending good and then some sort of good result.
So one of the things that uh, that makes a good game, of course, is the music. So think about the different kind of style of music that you're going to have in these different scenes, and browsing through the YouTube music library and looking at genres or moods. Remember, you can filter YouTube, the sound library, the music library by mood. So I want a mood of sadness or happiness to then add to my various scenes to also add that feeling into the game. It's not just the visuals uh, that make a good game, but also the audio. Okay, so I'm going to make a new scene, scene four, ending good. In this case, uh, the point is uh, you are going through the mansion and everything, or wherever, you, whatever your quest is, and then I get to the end, and what's the best thing that you can find from exploring a scary mansion? The <laughs> money, the jackpot, gold, and riches. So it'll be some sort of, um, you survived. Well, the exit's going to be behind the gold, so once you get the gold, then there's the exit. But I'm going to draw here a room like full of treasure or something. So, you can say, you win, or you survived, you won, you winner. So maybe a pot of gold. It's either a pot of gold or a pot of M&Ms, but either way I'm happy. I guess we can put a stack of, of, of uh, Benji's over here too, and uh, gold bricks. And then the same idea here, I need um, a uh, quit or replay button. Maybe I can borrow the ones I already drew on the other scene, copy and paste. Okay, so um, let's uh, take a little break, uh, maybe work on your scenes a little bit now that we have an idea. Take a little break in 10 minutes until 2.12. When we come back, we'll start to create some uh, symbols and such out of our various uh, drawings. And then uh, we'll start to do a little coding and then have a little lab time for you to work on the tap frenzy and then come back on Wednesday and then continue. So it's 2.02, we'll be back at 2.12 and then we'll go on. <laughs>